when you saw those numbers, what you think? Uh, I'm glad I was in, in the bed already because I might have fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Is he buying dinner? At any uh, point? I'm, yeah, probably. Probably. No, um, he's, he, you know, Matt, Matt deserves it. Uh, everything, all the good that comes to him, he deserves it. Uh, you know, he's a guy that comes in every day with purpose, which is important, um, especially at the quarterback position. He's definitely the leader of this team. Um, he acts like that um, every day. You don't have to worry about him having any off the field problems. And every single year, you see him grow a little bit more. Um, so I'm happy for him. What's going on guys, it's Saturday, August 9th. That means another edition of building the franchise with the Detroit Lions. This is episode number four at the start of NBL season 26. I was 15 wins away from a 300 career win mark in the Madden Bomber League. So right now we're 2-0. We left off at week two last time, defeating the Atlanta Falcons. So we got 13 more wins to go to get to 300. But let me let, me let y'all in on what y'all missed out so far. We're gonna take you through week three to week five. I just played the week five game yesterday night. That was Friday night. But first off, Stafford, we signed him to an extension. Five years, $90.3 million. Ziggy Ansah, we also signed him four-year extension, $39 million. Center Travis Swanson, we're going to be bringing him back, only 26 years old. Five years, $22 million. We're going to go over this week. Week three, we played the Atlanta Falcons, who were 1-1 one one at the time. Week four, we played the Vikings, who were 1-2. And, and week five, we take on the Panthers, 3-1. and one. We're going to cover all those games right now. We're currently 2-0, and oh, and let's just see how we did. All right, guys, what's going on? It's week three in the NBL. Feeling good. Lions are 2-0. and We went ahead and signed Corey Fuller. I know he wasn't on the list last week, but he knows the offense. We got to bring in a guy that knows the offense. We actually get a media question this week from Larry Ridley. He's asking about uh, some big signings we have, which would be Matt Stafford, who we signed at the end of this game, along with Ziggy Ansa. So we looked at the question. He asked about, you know, getting this guy locked down in a big contract. What's it going to do? We said, honestly, we're not sure how far we are apart right now. Uh, but he's going to be a part of this team one way or another. We knew we'd franchise tag Matt Stafford if we couldn't get the deal gun deal done. But on to the game. Week 3. Atlanta Falcons are 1-1, one and one, but they have no Matt Ryan, no Julio Jones. Vic Be Beasley gets injured at the start of this game, and he's going to miss the entire game. And here goes Atlanta on their first drive, 3rd and 7. Kevin Hogan. You can't hold the ball too long against Detroit. They got Ziggy Ansah on one side, Kerry Hyder Jr. on the other. Defensive end as Ziggy's working. Watch him work, watch him work, and down goes Kevin Hogan. Lions off to a good start. A team that really lacks offense. We have to take advantage of this. Matt Stafford looking back in the pocket, dropping to the left, finds his man, third and 18. What a throw. Slicing and Dyson, five for six, 62 yards. Now we're on the goal line, and yes, that's Amir Dula. We're going to trust him again, give him the ball up the middle. Touchdown, Detroit. We go up 7-0 in week three. We're trying to improve the 3-0 right now. Stafford shotgun formation dropping back. 45-yard line looking over top. No, sir. Interception. Number 45 takes it to the house, and you can't do that. A team that's going to struggle to put points on the board. They don't have Julio Jones or Matt Ryan. You can't give them points, Matt. You got to be better than that. Here goes Kevin Hogan. Former fifth-round pick finds Gabriel. It looks like it's going to be a Face mask by Tahir Whitehead is going to pick up even more yards. And Atlanta's driving. 225 left in the second quarter. This team seems like they got it going on like Donkey Kong, but not today. The user, the user, he's an abuser. Tahir Whitehead gets the interception down to the 20, and they face mask us right back. It's okay. We end up getting a field goal out of it. Kevin Hogan, start of the third quarter. He's on to the races. No, he's not. He throws it down the field, and what a catch. I was upset. Kevin Hogan getting it done with his feet. But they couldn't get nothing done. Yeah, they got a field goal. They tied it up. And here goes Golden Tate. Excuse me, Marvin Jones into the end zone. But they say, they review it and say it's no good. So now we got to go to Theo Riddick to punch it in. We still get the seven. And boy, do we miss Golden Tate. You know, I bring him up and I still get sad. Kevin Hogan over the middle all kinds of time. He's scrambling again. One, two, many times. You know, we saw him come out of the pocket a lot in this game. He was trying to make some things happen with his feet and with his arm. And, uh, you know, he just got a little too 
too risky there. And Stafford here steps in the pocket. What a throw. Takes a hit. Finds Marvin Jones. And that's a big first down. We end up getting a field goal off of that. We go up 20 to 10. And that's how this game ends. Lions win week three, 20 to 10 against the depleted Atlanta Falcons team who falls to one and two on the season. And we protect the home field. And, and now we're 3-0 feeling good. So we're going to look at the post game. We got some XP that came up to here. Whitehead. Let's go ahead and get him some block shedding. Don Carey, uh, backup safety, not using him too much. Uh, Gerard Davis, we're going to pump a little bit into him. Gerard's been the guy over the in the middle of the field, at middle linebacker. He's been doing a great job as a rookie. Miles Killebrew, always looking to develop him. Tavon Austin, we don't know how long we're going to have him for. Uh, so, you know, Tavon Wilson, excuse me. Uh, Bruce Gatson, not really too worried about him. Uh, moving along, here's what it looks like in the NFC North right now. Lions 3-0, Vikings 1-2. Bears 2 and 1. Bears surprisingly 2 and 1. Playing very well. And we're headed into week 4. All right guys, it's week 4 and we're excited. We're going to play a division rival the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they're currently 1 and 2 right now. They've gotten off to a little slow start. We're 3 and 0. Oh. We're feeling good. Sam Bradford has declared the starter for Minnesota this week after Bridgewater had a bad game. And look how we start this game off. Sam Bradford going to be in shotgun formation here. I want you to watch Nevin Lawson here on this play. 0-0, zero zero, first quarter. This is the first drive for the Minnesota Vikings. They got the ball first. Second and 10. Tries to force it. And Nevin Lawson makes a phenomenal play in the flat. And it's going to be a pick six to start this game. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Nevin Lawson. He's up on contract year two. We might, we might be interested in, in bringing him back. We end up winning the game 34-28. to Wasn't too many highlights that game. We kind of walked away with it. They made a little run back at the end to tie it up couple two-point conversions but look at Stafford over Bradford uh, he played great that was one of his better games of the season 80% completion percentage over 280 yards and guess what Golden Tate comes back in two weeks so that's probably going to be somewhere around our bye week I'm thinking uh, week eight obviously that's going to be on NBL Live you can check it out here uh, check out the archives of NBL Live play-by-play -play broadcast it's going to be on the big stage uh, so we're looking for a Golden Tate to come back that game. Week 8 versus Steelers. We got the Panthers and the Saints coming up next. Currently, we're 4-0. We're at the top of the league. Only three teams undefeated right now. The Ch Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So NBL Live could be really interesting in Week 8. Rematch of Super Bowl 25 as well. Let's take a look at some scouting right now, guys. We're looking at wide receiver. We're always looking at wide receiver to improve at that position. Golden Tate getting a little older. Marvin Jones getting a little older. And look at these guys, 6'5", 6'1", 6'1", 6'6", Calvin Patrick, 6'6", from Georgia. Really like him. Morris Barclay, obviously 5'9", potentially a speedster. Once we get those 40 times and the combine scores, we'll know a little bit more right now. But we're just checking out these guys uh, at wide receiver and seeing what we can do with it. Uh, we're going to head on to week 5 now. We're 4-0. Oh. We're feeling good. We're going to take on the Carolina Panthers, who are 3-1 and one at the time. And the Panthers are tough. I mean, this is a tough team. Luke Keekley, uh, they do it all. They, they have the ability to, to to beat you down defensively and offensively. They can ground and pound. They are going to be without Christian McCaffrey, though. So, so keep in mind that. We're going to do some upgrading here. Kenny Galladay, we're probably going to upgrade his route running. I think that would probably be most important for him right now. Give him a little boost on route running to 76. Check out some traits real quick. Traits not working in CFM right now. Hopefully they get that fixed for us. All right, we also got Killebrew. I like awareness with Killebrew. I, I think that's one thing you need to pump up on these young guys. Uh, you know, get their awareness up, and then they can let their attributes and their athletic ability kind of play for them. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Killebrew probably upgrading awareness right now. Check out some traits on him. As we said earlier, the traits aren't working right now, so uh, potentially. And, and we go ahead and just up two on the play rec. That was the best bang for the buck. Got it up to 59. He's a 71 overall. Uh, look for him to be starting next year. I don't think we're bringing back Tavon Wilson. Uh, obviously, here's some contracts we got coming up. Tavon Wilson, number one, 81. He's ready to go. 87 speed, 27 years old. I, I think we go with Killebrew, but Nevin Lawson. That's the guy I'm really thinking about. Is he worth the guy? Four years, $24 million for a guy with 90 speed, undersized, can't press, decent coverages, but he's been making some big plays. I, I think he's earned it. Greg Robinson, another guy that I want to pay, but I don't know if I want to pay him four or five years for $20 million. I don't know if he's worth that right now with slow development. Uh, offensive game plan, we're keeping it the same. Tease Tabor, Gerard Davis, Taylor Decker. We're getting ready for week five. This is going to be a big game. This is going to be a playoff atmosphere game early in the season. And here we go. Carolina 3-1. Detroit 4-0. Our first drive, we drive all the way down the field. Watch Amir Abdullah here. We're going to flip the play. Stafford does not like what he sees. We put him on the other side. 
we're always trying to run away from Luke Keekley. See where he's at and run the heck to the other side because you don't want nothing to do with him. He gets blocked there. Nice block right there by Eric Ebron and a little bit of a late hit, but we're not going to get too petty on it. 7-0. Panthers march right back down the field. We're in a cover two. I try to take away this, the drag, and the post burns me in the slot, and they end up putting seven on the board. 7-7. Seven seven. Here we go. Ebron wide open underneath. Let's pick up some yards. He tries to dive forward. Fumble. Costly turnover, but Ebron gets up, makes the tackle. Tackles Davis at the 43. That was a big turnover. And watch this punt. 14-7. We're down seven. A minute left in the second. We got to get a big play here. I try to force him back inside with Hayden, and that completely didn't work out well. Walks to the end zone, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. So we've dug ourselves a little hole. 21-7. We're down. This is the first time we've been in this situation. What's Stafford going to do? Dropping back, looking, looking. Goes deep, finds Marvin Jones. 28 to 14. We're down 14. He catches it. But the most impressive part of the play is Luke Keekley somehow makes the tackle to stop me from getting in the end zone. The middle linebacker. I can't believe it. Stafford goes down. He went down seven times a day. Seven sacks from this, this tough Carolina defense. We look to see them in the playoffs again. He actually gets out of the game for a play or two. Here comes Rudock, the backup, looking to make a play. Big cut block by the halfback. Has a man over the middle. Intercepted. And Marvin Jones beat his man off the press. That was a very impressive interception. Here we go. Here we go. Cam looking over the middle. Darius Slay picks it off on the left side of the field. What a play by Slay. We're down 14. Three minutes left in the fourth. We're trying to make a comeback here. 35 to 21. Can we get something happening, please? Marvin Jones sighting. There he is. Again. He's going to do it again. A little bit of a whoop. Little juke move, touchdown Detroit, we're only down a touchdown now. Can you believe it? All the fumbles, all the drops, and we're driving. Marvin Jones Jr., we, we come back off a fumble from Theo, Theo Riddick. We got the ball back now. No huddle, let's move it up the field, pick up the pace, no timeouts. Matt Stafford trying to get the line down to hike this ball. Little play action, little play action post, looking over the middle. Likes what he sees, no, the defender backs up, jumps it, picks it. And our Detroit Lions go down, and that's our first loss of NBL season 26 in week five we, we fall to four and one and it was tough I mean you look at the the punt return yards they obviously had that that punt return turnovers we had five of them but third down conversions look at this we were 62 percent they were 16 and, and we were down the entire game now we want to look at some sack leaders obviously we've had trouble getting some pressure early in the season Kerry Hyder Jr. and Ziggy Ansah have been doing their job we need a couple other guys to step up we know a little bit more from Haloti Nada in his final season with Detroit we're currently four and one right now tied with the Chicago Bears and guys, this is it. The Bears are looking good. The Vikings, who we thought were going to be our rivalry this year, they're not looking good. It's going to be Detroit and Chicago for the NFC North, it looks like, early on, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. This was episode number four, Building the Franchise. We went through weeks three to weeks five. And we'll have more action for you coming up this week, maybe even a special edition as, as Golden Tate looks to come back. Uh, for all our stats and our schedule and all the information, go to MaddenBomberLeague.com. Hit that like and that subscribe button. And thanks for watching. We will see you next Saturday and every Saturday on the NBL Network.